Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment, and in today's video, I'm going to cover a new feature in the Epilog software. Let's get into it. The new feature of the software is an automated test grid. So make sure before you actually try to do this that you have the latest software installed onto your machine other versions may not have it on there already. Without further ado, let's go over to the computer and I will show you exactly how to use it. In order to get to the generator to be able to do these material tests, you're going to need to make sure that you open the Epilog Job Manager. Once you are in the Job Manager, go to the Jobs tab and you'll see all of your folders listed down below. So there's the All folders, the Temporary Jobs, and then anything else that you've created. There's also one called uncategorized. You'll notice that if I'm on the all jobs folder, I don't really have any options. If I click on temporary jobs, I still do not have any options that say generate. It's very specific here where it will only show up if you are in the uncategorized jobs or your own folders that you've created yourself. Now I've created one for material test jobs, and in this one, if you go to the top right corner, you will see a button that says generate. This would be nice if this was in the temporary jobs or the all folders. I do understand why it's not, but if you're looking in those folders, you won't see this. So it's not super obvious. So what you can do is click on the generate tool. And here is where you have quite a few options actually. On the left-hand panel, you can choose your element size, you can choose how many columns, as well as how many rows. For a lot of materials, you can really narrow it down to kind of a handful of items that you need. So for example, if I'm cutting, I'm probably not gonna be at 100% speed. Meanwhile, if I'm engraving, I'm probably not gonna be at 1% speed. So you can really skew your grid size based on the material that you want to work with. You will also notice that as you change these, if I say from 10 to say five, you will see that the preview auto updates and the colors will change. So each one of these colors gets mapped to a setting and that's how the grid is created. So for now, I'm going to leave this as it is because I typically want to set my ranges first and then I'll come back and set how many columns and rows and I'll show you why here in a minute. Over on the right hand side, you have an option for autofocus. I typically don't use that. I go ahead and focus the machine ahead of time. Output position, you can choose center or top left. I just leave it on center. The process type, you can choose either engrave or vector. If I change it to vector, you will notice that it changes to just outline so that you can cut. If you change it back to engrave, it will fill them in for engraving. If you want to figure out settings for cutting through material or vector scoring a material, you're going to want to use the vector option. If you want to do a raster engraving setting, you're going to need to use the engrave option. Then down below, you have a couple of options for the x-axis and the y-axis. You can choose speed, power, thickness, resolution, and dithering. Most of what I do is going to be from speed and power, then if I get into an engraving option and I want to check different dithering types, that's really where that's going to come into play. But most often, most people are going to want this for the speed and power to figure out the initial settings. I leave the X as speed and I leave the Y as power. So for this example, I'm going to use multiply acrylic. It's typically very difficult to get one pass to look really good for engraving. It's also difficult to figure out the settings for it. So here, what I'm going to do is I know that I don't want to engrave at speeds that are less than say 30 or 40%. It just doesn't make any sense from a time factor standpoint. So here I'm actually going to change it from 50 to 100. I try to make my columns match my percentage jumps by either 5% or 10%. I typically start with 10%. If I'd like to go from 50 to 100, I'm going to need six columns because I need 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Here I'll change my columns to six. And then under my power, 
This one really depends. I don't want to go too low because you really don't want a 50% with one power. One isn't going to get you through hardly anything. For power, I would usually also start around the 30 or 40% mark. And I typically start with multiply acrylic around 30 or 40 and go up to maybe, you know, 80 or 90. If you go 100, sometimes that can get to be too much and you'll kind of char through things. So here I'm going to actually set this from 40 and let's just do 80 just to see what it looks like. Same thing, if I wanna go from 40 to 80, I'm going to make my rows five so I can go from 40 to 50, 60, 70, 80. The smaller you can narrow down that range, the quicker it's gonna to be to make these grids and the quicker you're going to be able to machine them. You don't really need the whole gambit for things. I will say that it can be useful if you wanna do different tones on wood, that doing a wide gambit might be really nice. But for figuring out engraving and multiply acrylic, I would really try to narrow that range. The next thing for resolution, I try to do 400, maybe 300 at best. If you go from 500 and up, it's kind of unnecessary. You don't need to go to that much detail and it's just gonna waste a lot of time. You can change your dithering. I personally like either Stucky or Jarvis. I'm gonna use Jarvis on this one. You can play around with this. You can use none. Very up to interpretation and your own preference. Once I'm ready, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Once I have filled all this out, I can give it a special name. In this case, I'm gonna call it multiply acrylic. And in here, I might say speed 50 to 100 and power 40 to 80 so that if I wanna reference this one in the future, I already have one built. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And if you go to the bottom of that job category that you're in, you'll see that it pops up. Just double click that. It will send over to the camera system in the machine and you can move it around. So I'm gonna put it up here in the top left. One thing I wanna point out that I would really like, especially with multiply acrylic, is if you go into the details, you do have the option to change the engraving direction to bottom up. By default, it's automatically top down. You can't change it in the generator right now, but you can change it after the fact by going into each setting and changing that if you wish. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, so I'll cut forward a little bit, but I do think that that would be an awesome feature. Another thing I'd like to point out with this is when you actually send it and it's generating the time, it does say it'll take about seven minutes, 12 seconds. I have found that this is typically longer than what it actually takes on the machine. So this says seven minutes, 12 seconds. I'll actually tell you how long it took on the machine. It's just very hard to generate that time. From here, what you'll do is you'll go down to print and it will send it over. It will kind of disappear from this screen and go back to the collapse version. And I will show you how it machines. Before I show you the machine, I do want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Epilogue Laser. I've been using Epilogue Lasers since about 2013. So it's been over a decade and they have performed really well every time that I use them. If you're looking for a high quality machine that can keep up with production level runs, I highly recommend Epilog Machinery. And if you check out their website right now, they actually have a fall sale going on. If you click on their ad at the front of their page, you will see that they have different options depending on what you intend to get. If you're looking at the edge models, you'll be able to get a free air assist pump and free shipping. That ends in November 29th. All pro models receive a free rotary attachment and free shipping. And that also ends November 29th and the Fusion Galvo G100, that one has up to $4,000 off depending on the model, and that one ends October 31st. So if you've ever wanted to get an epilogue, now is a great time to do this with the sales that they have going on. You can go to epiloguelaser.com or you can use my affiliate link in the description below, which is epiloguelaser.com slash maker dash experiment to check out these offers. And of course, if you have any questions about it or if you'd like to know more about what the machines are like, 
feel free to reach out and I will do my best to answer all of your questions. Now that I've sent the grid over to the machine, let's go ahead and show you what that machining process is like. And a hint here, I typically run two passes on multiply acrylic to get a really nice finish, but I'll update you at the end as to what exactly I do and how that turns out. All right, here's the result from the laser. So what I do is I actually write in marker sometimes what it was, so power 40 to 80, speed 50 to 100. And when I look at this, and it might be hard to see on camera, but you can tell over on the bottom left, this is a little bit too slow and too high power together, and it really gives a sloppy finish that you can see on the camera. Top right doesn't quite get through all the way. I did run this as two passes, and because of that, you're also going to see a little bit of difference if you were to run this in one pass. One pass, some of these didn't get through at all. The second pass kind of cleaned it up. My favorite out of this test grid is probably going to be the 90% speed, 80% power. You can do more iterations and try to get a better result, but that is the best of this grid. And I have done other grids where it was slightly different and I believe I ended up with 100% speed and maybe 90% power. This one, I didn't go up to 90% power, but this will give you a pretty good result. And you can tell that there's no blue left over. It looks nice and crisp on the engraving, but this made it super quick. And just to note, initially it was a little over seven minutes that it said it would take. When I ran it twice, it took about seven minutes, but each individual pass was actually only three minutes and 28 seconds. So keep that in mind. I've been playing around with the grid generator for a little while now. I've got a whole bunch of tests to prove it, both vector and engraving. I've also done it on some wood to get some quick results. What used to take me probably 20 to 30 minutes to set up the file, and then I'd have to change it every single time I wanted to change a lever, has boiled down to mere seconds to generate the grid. And that is a huge improvement from what I used to have to do. If you had gone back, say even a year ago, this would have been a little bit more work. So the fact that Epilogue has come out with this will make it super easy for not only experienced users trying to fine tune some things, but also beginners that have never used a laser before to get up and running, find some settings that work, and be able to do that quickly without a lot of experience. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And be sure to check out my Instagram, at Maker Experiment, where I share things along the way. But I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.